The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. I just got so scared, boys. Okay. That's not a joke. What is this energy? (laughs) I've never been... That! Yeah, that! No, no, no! You don't understand. (laughs) You're making it worse. What you make as a group when you all do that is a scary sound. It activates my fight or flight response. <laughs> and spoiler alert, my brain and body have never chosen fight. <laughs> for for McElroy's, it is a flight response. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Slight or fart. <laughs> the two. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my brother, my brother, me and my show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. It's not a competition. It's not, I'm piss pants terrified. I'm Griffin McElroy. All right. Much like uh, so many years ago, those Chilean miners emerging from <laughs> we the all love so much. We have re- returned here to the, the uh, beautiful... Uh, is, it, is D.C. technically a city? Is that the right thing to say? Okay. The city of... Is it's it just district? a loose conglomeration of humans. I'm hearing a lot... Hey, I'm hearing a lot of you yell different things, and that's Buck Wild, okay? <laughs> Let's clamp that down. Taxation without representation, am I right? The nerve of these fat cats. Anyway... <laughs> Uh, we are so excited to be here. Last night we did uh, The Adventure Zone, another podcast. And, and well, the, ro- the road's tough. On, the road's hard the road's on hard. all of us yeah. in different ways. This is, God, at this point, this is our second show this tour. <laughs> and the road. And we're not as young as we used to be. Not as young as you used to be. And uh, last night I'm sad, sad to report we did have an injury. Uh, Trav, do you want to talk about it? <laughs> I, after the show, I threw slap bracelets into the audience. And I threw them so hard I hurt my arm. We've heard about this injury, the slap bracelet injury that Travis sustained quite a bit this evening. I watched, It hurts to do everything. I watched six episodes of Succession in my hotel room today. I have heard Travis talk about this injury more than I've heard Brian Cox call his kids fuckwads. So it's like... It's that it hurts to do... Like, it hurts everything. to undo Travis my ever, belt to, to pee. pee. Yes, we've heard... And you wouldn't you help, help me. me. Yeah, I know, Travis. I asked, I asked you, you to help, help me pee. pee. We just wasted a lot of your time. We're we have, we have horrible bodies. Let's Terrible get into bodies. the show. Let's They're all broken and nothing works. Riddle me peace, boys! You're just making it worse. You're just in Tis birth. but a warm-up! Okay, you're, you don't have to do this right. I won't do the voice for the actual riddle. Then get to the fucking but riddle. But this is but the intro. <laughs> now I want to actually hear the riddle now because it will put an end to this misery. Okay, riddle feed me, guy. riddle master. Now this, this riddle I picked solely for the answer. All right. And I will read it caps appropriately. Jesus Christ. <laughs> if I say that I will give you $100,000 tomorrow, when will you get it? I'm, uh, I'm going to say never. Uh, I'm going to say tomorrow. Okay. This is, I'm going to read it word for word, caps, punctuate, and I'll scoot this back a little bit. <laughs> never! <laughs> tomorrow never ever comes! It's always today! <laughs> Stop. 
So now I understand the heart of this riddle, but if a human being said to me, I'll give you $100,000 tomorrow, and then the next day I said, I would like that $100,000, please, and they said, ha-ha, but tis not tomorrow, it is today. I'd be like, fuck you, Dylan. Yeah, Dylan. Yeah. Dylan, you dirtbag. It bag. is, you told me yesterday, so it, it is now, and you do owe me $100,000. So this is a person that has seen that sign that's in every fine bar, the sign that says free beer tomorrow. They saw that sign and thought, Mm, what a brain teaser. Yeah. <laughs> the center, the center oh. of my next conundrum. Or they went and saw Rent and just did not fucking understand <laughs> kind of the whole thesis. This, this uh, riddle was written by a dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's never later. No day but today. I fucking told you guys, didn't I? Told you. Uh, How my, about a question? Can we yes, do one of them? A, this is a question. My dad is a hairy, hairy man. Nice. Start the question, Juice. Okay. <laughs> uh, my dad's a hairy, hairy man. So hairy, it doesn't matter how high the neck on his shirt is. The hair on his chest always manages to poke out of the top of his shirt. He has a Been there. He has a tiny little dog. Very cute. And he frequently sends pictures of her. The problem is, he sends selfies of him and the dog from a low angle, revealing how shirtless and hairy he is with a very serious dad face. How do I tell my dad to stop sending me shirtless pics so I can show my friends his cute dog, but not my hairy dad with no shirt? That's from Desperate Daughter. Are yeah. You, are you here? All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your decisiveness. Um, can what's, you, a, what's a serious dad face? Yes, okay, Trav, let's audio, break audio down. Medium. We're in an audio medium, and also they are in a pitch black room that we can't see. We've used our words to weave pictures before. Yeah, that's okay. true. I think it's kind of like this. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, can... <laughs> God almighty. One of these phones we got now. Hey, what's the deal with these phones these days? They've got to have some sort of crop functionality, yes? They have to have some sort of content aware. That's one hairy daddy. That is feature where it just auto fills with more dog. The, this is, is a cute <laughs> tiny dog with one enormous wild man shaped lump on its back. That is true. Like, there's a thing that I can turn on that turns my head into a unicorn's head. There's not something I can hit that instantly puts a shirt on your dad. I think you should, next time your dad's like, hey, I'm sending you a pic, just turn your phone around and hold it up. Like, guys, I got a good dad pic coming in. You guys look first. I want to see what you all think. Or maybe just like cut a tiny shirt out of construction paper and glue it to your phone. To your phone. Permanently, that's yeah. right. You get the crop exactly right. Do you, does your matter? dad know? Were you like, hey, that, especially a low angle. <laughs> yeah, hey, straight up, nobody's accidentally taken a low angle selfie. <laughs> He didn't trip on his skateboard <laughs> and the shutter button hit with himself perfectly framed rule of thirds. Like, I don't know why you're saying this is a problem. I say you set your dad up with an Instagram and let him make a million dollars. Right. I've, I've been on the internet and your dad's gonna find his audience. <laughs> I, have, I have very little doubt about that. And the dog's hairy, too, and you're not giving a shit about that. Uh, thank you. Yeah. All animals. Uh, think about it. I'm just it. saying, no matter how hairy your dad is, not as hairy as that dog. Get him. Unless. <laughs> Unless. Unless. Oh, no. <laughs> Dad's got to get a bigger dog. Solved it for you. <laughs> is your dad shirtless? I cannot tell. Cannot Can't tell. tell. Can you get a dog that exactly match matches the color of his chest hair? <laughs> And then it becomes like an I Spy poster. <laughs> if you, there's a dog in there, I swear. Cross, Cross your, your eyes. eyes. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> well, Thanks, Larry show. the Cable Guy. <laughs> Lord, I apologize for our great... There's a... Fuck, there's a... There's a Every time I drink wine on stage, and it's a new thing for me, I'm an adult now, and I like this, I like this stinky red beverage. But... <laughs> Every time I do, bugs are like, what's up, you doing a show? Can I get in that? And it's very distracting. I'm just going to drink a bug and not even worry about it. <laughs> Free protein. Uh, here's a, I got a Yahoo. Can I do a Yahoo? Yeah, bud. 
This one was sent in by Seth Carlson. Thank you, Seth. It's Yahoo Answers user Soups who asks. That's S-O-U-P-S, not like Superman shorts. You know what? It never crossed my mind. Wow, I okay. assumed it was S-O-U-P-S. Multiple soups. Okay. His avatar is the Hamburglar. There's a lot going on with this. <laughs> anyway. Soups asks, could a gorilla become a vampire? <laughs> Followed by, are vampires only human or can they be any mammals? I'm, wow. Huh. That actually opens up the Humans, door. Humans, bats. Travis couldn't think of a third mammal, everybody. No, <laughs> no, hold on. I'm saying vampires are already humans and bats. Oh, okay, okay. okay. What if it Please does? stop yelling mammals or anything. Um, what if it, they could... Okay, the better question is, how hungry does a vampire have to be? <laughs> Before he's like, oh, fuck. I have to eat something. Why did we come to this place where there are so many gorillas? <laughs> I'm going to do it, Vicky. I'm going to eat a gorilla. <laughs> it's the most dude-shaped animal. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's the thrill of the... At that point, it's like, humans, we're... Pretty we're easy. Fucking weak. Yeah. Yeah, we're right? a weak person. I've seen a lot of vampire movies. Nine out of ten of us are easy to take down. And I've had a lot of conversation about this. Statistically speaking, about half of the people would be like, yeah, okay. Seems yeah. all right. <laughs> and a gorilla is like, ooh, if that gets you, though. Ooh. 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 I kind of now want to see a gorilla fight a Dracula. Yeah. That would be very ooh. good. I think we've got a little old lady who swallowed a fly situation on our hands, as we so often do on this show, where... The gorillas are going to wipe out a lot of the vampire population when they try to get froggy and leap. Yes. But the it, few that succeed are going to make, <laughs> going to make fucking vampa gorillas. Yes. And they're going to, that's, hey, what are we going to vampirize to kill the vampa gorillas? Hey, thank you. Why stop there? What about a vampa rhino? Vampa rhino is and bad they, news. And they suck it through the, through the horn. Shit, dog. Yeah. They're not going to turn any humans, though, because there's not going to be a vampire with, like, a hole in its torso. Oh, yeah, what no. about a vampire whale? Vampire whale? All that fucking baleen. <laughs> what oh, the baleen's just kind of sharp now. Yeah, I'm just chilling in here like a hammock. It's not bad. My, my juices are being trained. but There's just a lot of vampire krill running around yeah. now. If they do a vampire duckbill platypus, is it just going to gum you to death? Is it going to be... Huh. Gnaw on you? Well, it already has out. poisonous spines on its feet. Yeah. So it's Perhaps they just migrate up to its mouth now. <laughs> let Gross. Me, let me walk on you, Dylan. <laughs> let me walk on your back. <laughs> Trust me. How about another question? Uh, yes, my son. What? <laughs> Twist. No one it's saw. It's a big reveal. No one saw this coming so late <laughs> in the sh series. Uh, I was wondering if you have any advice on how to ask my friends if I can massage them in a non creepy way. <laughs> For the last year or so, I have been watching massage tutorial videos on YouTube to relax before bed. And I feel like I have gained a lot of knowledge on the subject and want to practice the skills. I don't want anyone to think I'm a creep or a weirdo, no danger of that. I just think it would be a fun skill to have. What do I do? How can I offer this to my friends? And that's from amateur massage therapist in Silver Spring. Are you here? Okay, hello. Now, it occurs to me, as my older brother is reading this question, that you've watched a lot of videos mm -hmm. and have done no practical, like, experience at all. So you've watched and you've kind of moved your hands in the air. <laughs> And we're like, that's what I would kind of do on some skin. That seems right. It's like a practicing a kiss on a teddy bear, isn't it? Except there's no teddy bear. You're just kind of uh, uh, just mouth in the air. So, uh, uh, you, I. The okay. way you're gonna have to phrase it is, can I massage you for the first time? <laughs> 
ever. I want to practice my art. Well, hold on, because that makes it sound like you have massaged other people, but you are treating them specifically for the first time. You would have to phrase it something wild like, can I, for the first time, <laughs> Touch massage you, another human. and have it be you? <laughs> May I offer you my first ever <laughs> massage? Wow. We all forgot syntax except for Travis up here for a bit. But there is also like, if any one of my friends started a sentence with, you know, I've been learning about massage, they wouldn't finish before I was like, hmm, do it, do it, go. <laughs> What's the Everything worst? is stressful I, all the time. I know 800 people, and if any one of them came up to me and said, uh, do you want a massage? I'd say, oh, absolutely. Thank yeah. you so much. You and re- that's Justin, yeah, who is me. rife with social anxiety. No, that's not. I'm, I'm, I'll take a massage, though. That gets rid of all the anxiety. I mean, I hurt myself. <laughs> oh, Trav, yeah. yeah hey, bud, it. let me see that arm. Yeah, I hurt myself yeah, throwing which, slap is bracelets. This, is it this one? But it's both of them, Griffin. <laughs> it, here's some quick advice. Uh, one, don't open with... I'm not asking this in a weird or creepy way, but... <laughs> That's number one. Number two, massage is an, an art and a technique and may, perhaps a science, if I may be so bold. I would maybe take a class. Yeah. It would be a fun, fun place to start. Or, number three, if you're really serious and you say, hey, I'm an amateur massage therapist, because aren't we all? Uh, <laughs> I'm an amateur massage therapist. My first fucking question is, show me the table. If you've got one of those weird tables, and I just looked on Amazon, they're $84. And you know what that is, Justin? An investment. Investment yes. in your future. Of you can do this- all kinds of stuff on a massage table. Why don't other pieces of... Fucking chill. Okay, a list of some things you could do. Take a nap. With everybody, a straw to a drink underneath. Or just take it. Hey, everybody, we're all talking. Oh, you sleep on your side or you sleep on your back? I sleep on my fucking front. I sleep on my front with a hole for that. And I watch TV. I watch TV down there. My TV's on the fucking floor, rewatching Breaking Bad. I fall asleep gently, breathing through my good hole. If I roll three inches either way, I die. <laughs> I am strapped to the bed. I'm yes. strapped to the bed. Yes, it's very safe. I have a friend I trust. <laughs> what if you wake up and your butt looks awesome and everybody's like your butt looks so awesome and you're like yeah i guess just you're not supposed to sleep on it we're not we weren't supposed to sleep on it this whole time so yeah it looks really cool and good like it got it got like bigger and it looks good are there not practice dummies one could i know i'm saying it out loud a pra- no this is good travis you start rubbing them and they're, they're like oh that's good yes excellent that is the spot that is perfect right there. Whoa, whoa, no, not there. Oh, oh, oh I can't move my legs. I'm peeing oh, forever now. I'm peeing forever. I'll never stop peeing. And then it says, and then it says game over on the, <laughs> on the scoreboard. <laughs> Coming to arcades this fall. <laughs> massage. massage, massage revolution. <laughs> That's good. Rub rabbits. Um, I, uh, uh, Griffin, you want to do another Yeah, question? sure. This one was sent in by Emma Kant. Uh, thank you. It's an anonymous Yahoo Answers user. So I'm going to call them Jeremiah Asks. My brain stopped working for a second there. <laughs> Am I allowed to buy all the Super Bowl tickets to have the stadium to myself? <laughs> Jeremy's big game. Have fun out there, guys. Go Broncos, go Jets. I don't care. Just have fun for Jeremy. Make it a good game. I have to think that this is an Air Bud situation, right? Where Jeremiah would roll up, say, here is, I don't know, $1.8 million or whatever. Probably considerably more than that. You think the gross take for the Super Bowl... Is 1.8 milli? You think buying out the Super Bowl costs less than buying a commercial on the Super Bowl? You think if <laughs> wait, let me you do think some if math. Coke could pay a 50,000 dipshits to stand around in red and white shirts that spell out Coke, they wouldn't in a fucking heartbeat. You're right, two million. <laughs> then I think that there would be a scenario in which the Super Bowl officials would go, "What? Uh, d- I mean, no- wait, hold on, let us look." There's no rule against it. Yeah, 
It's your game now. I have to step in here and break, the, break out of the bit a little bit to say Travis's understanding of all law and order is defined by the Airbud Clause. <laughs> Specifically, if there's not a rule against it, yeah. it's fine. Yeah, that's how new rules get written. There has to be to that stop ma- people like Travis. <laughs> that's a, that's that's Airbud Six. It's like the dog's gonna join this uh, basketball team. No, they're fucking not. No rule against it. Okay, hey guys, get together. I don't think dogs should be able to play basketball. Here, I, 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 I. Yeah. So fuck off. <laughs> that's actually we used to only have the Midnight Amendments. Yeah. Yes. So where we started was come on, be cool, nice. Yeah. And then tra- the Travises of human civilization. <laughs> Started pushing the boundaries. Well, this is what I'm saying. Maybe Airbud Seven is just like Airbud on a search for things he hasn't been legally ruled out of yet. Yes. Can I be a doctor? No. We have a law against. Oh, Shit. Uh, I'm gonna be a teacher. No, we got you there too, you <laughs> asshole. We saw you coming a mile away. Can I be a firefighter? You can be like a firefighter mascot. I'm not exactly sure how it works. Ah, no ah, rule. Ah, spray, 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 spray. I get to kill again. <laughs> <laughs> I think because you can't send a dog to death row, it's not in the law books. My, one of the, you know, you're buying yourself all the tickets to the Super Bowl, and that's great. But what you've also bought yourself is a private concert from Shakira and Jennifer Lopez. Yes. Who are doing the halftime show this year. If yes. we are the arbiters of this news to you. Yes. Lucky that Derek is small and humble, so I don't confuse him <laughs> with mountains. What was his name? Derek. It didn't fit the meter very well. Waiting for Derek. Whoa. Is that better? Don't be fooled by the rock that I got. I'm still, I'm still Derek from the block. All the songs will be about Derek. They would all work for Derek. I will give you $100 if you name another Shakira song and fit Derek into it. Okay. I'm mountain art. You know, Derek, don't lie. Don't go with me. That's the same song. That's, it's, a, it's a different... No. No, That's the same song. Know, it's hard to say, Trav. It's definitely a different part of the same song, if anything. Okay, Don't you I'll Google give you $50. It. Thank <laughs> you. Tomorrow? Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> As a child, I... This isn't a question. I'm sorry. Oh. Should have, As a child, I stole a toy from a restaurant in Philadelphia. My mom found out and made me put it back and apologized to the owner and while I was in there, I stole a different toy. <laughs> she still doesn't know. This was 10 years ago. It still haunts me. Please help. And that's, that's from Liam, who just used their name. No regard for their own... Uh, uh, safety. Liam, are you here? Um, Liam, quick follow-up question based on the subject line of the email. The toy in question, is it a Shrek toy? Yes. Liam says yes. That was a yes. That was a confirmation. That's a yes to the Shrek toy. Was it Donkey? What? The first, the first was a Lightning, Lightning McQueen, McQueen toy. toy. Holy shit, this was terrifyingly recent. What was... <laughs> what was the second toy, Absolute Silence? Was a Shrek action So game. it was Shrek. Well, you really traded up. So yeah, up to the winning DreamWorks team. We are really stretching the definition of action with that one, huh? Watch as he uses his stay away from other people action. <laughs> Wants to be left alone action. I mean, he stomps a dragon. Yeah. But on accident, that's all leading up to him being an introvert where he just wants to be left alone and everyone else is forcing social interaction upon him and we're supposed to side with them. You want to just recap all the Shrek movies? I'm just or? saying that maybe Do Shrek you? just wants to be left alone and okay. that's okay. Sure. Do Shrek Forever After next. Um... Don't you applaud. If Shrek is left alone, there's no films for us to enjoy. (laughs) You know it, and I know it, okay? I'm sorry Shrek was made uncomfortable, but in the end, (laughs) pushing past Shrek's boundaries was very healthy. Anyway. Healthy for the movie industry. (laughs) Healthy for Jeffrey Katzenberg's bottom line. Um, 
Here's what you do. You bring your mom into a parlor room and you sit her down and say, Mother, the, the great game is finally ending. <laughs> As the clock strikes midnight. <laughs> and now the 10-year statue of limitations has passed. I can reveal to you my most perfect crime. It is a... My beloved toy? You remember my most beloved toy, Shrump? Well, if you remove his mustache... <laughs> I did not, I did not. It is the, <laughs> it is the green ogre, Shrek. <laughs> I did not fashion him together for, by straps of burlap and calico as I once promised, no. He was manufactured and I stole him fair and square, mother. While I distracted you with my first crime at the Cracker Barrel, you, you paid no attention to the actual heist. <laughs> and that is how I got revenge on the man who ruined my father. Hey. Ruined my father? Yeah. Was it a Cracker Barrel? Because that seems like the only restaurant where you steal toys. <laughs> um, Wait. Oh, Le- you actually want I'm to answer. Just, I'm curious. Now Absolute Liam has left. Liam was so embarrassed. Wait a minute. No, he's being Wait chased by the cops. Where's my fucking wallet? <laughs> I mean, here's... here's uh, I feel like 10 years is a good amount of time. I also feel like once you are post 30, you can casually bring up like a time you got so high at the University of Michigan campus that you slept under a tree in your gym shorts in front of your dad. And it's like, (laughs) I'm an adult man. I'm an adult and it happened. Yeah, but you didn't, you weren't there. You did not catch me. Griffin, what? Double jeopardy, baby. What you are implying there is Liam has told us this happened 10 years ago. And so what you're saying is at age 20, Liam stole a Shrek toy from a restaurant. (laughs) (laughs) I just had to have it. (laughs) Liam, if you still have the toy, you know what you have to do. You have to go back to the restaurant. Mm-hmm. And, and say, fall in love with the owner's child. <laughs> what? It's a cute story on Reddit. Okay, I guess. Travis ruined my train of thought. Never mind, Liam. <laughs> Just throw it in the garbage and move on with your life. <laughs> I, I, I will say the good news, Liam, if you have reached adulthood and the worst thing you've done so far in your life is take a Shrek toy from a restaurant, you're doing okay. Uh... Stealing a Lightning McQueen, I feel like two yeah. steals in one trip is kind of up there. It only there. counts as one steal. <laughs> no, I yeah. don't. They stole a toy from a <laughs> restaurant. Hey, hey, Liam, if you walk into a restaurant and you're like, hey, what's up? I'm a thief. Sorry, my mom's busted me. You didn't, but here's your Lightning McQueen back. If they're not watching you like a fucking <laughs> hawk... <laughs> After that, like, hey, watch that little idiot clear the, clear the front door because I, I do not trust his sticky fingers. That's on them. Yeah. They basically gave it to you. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they were actually super excited you took the Shrek. I'm like, we've been trying to get rid of that Shrek forever. That we had Shrek. that sweet honey pot just waiting for someone to steal it. Thank you. Oh, we hate that green ogre. Uh, for insurance. Somebody said for insurance. <laughs> <laughs> they insured. That Shrek doll for millions of dollars. <laughs> it was one of Finally, a kind. One someone of a kind. fell for it. This one was hand kissed by Mike Myers. Uh, I have a Yahoo here that was sent in by Max. Thank you, Max. Max. It's an anonymous Yahoo Answers user who I'm going to call Plar. <laughs> Asks. <laughs> Pole, would you want a hallway full of vending machines? So, when guests come over, you can make yourself a nice little profit. Let, let's just go straight down the line. No discussion yet. Poll, yes or no? Would I do it? Would you want it? Poll, yes or no? As a guest or as a homeowner? As a homeowner. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I think so. Here's my argument. I'm, uh, as Travis has so cavalierly thrown out, <laughs> can be uncomfortable in some situations, <laughs> socially speaking. 
uh, if I didn't have to ask somebody for a Diet Coke and I just had to go put fucking a dollar in the machine, I would be stoked as hell. <laughs> I don't have to ask people for anything. I can just buy my own Kit Kat. Fuck yes, I would. Absolutely. That's a great host. They've cut down one uncomfortable interaction. If there was like a place I could pay to pee, that would be ideal for me. I just... Because then you feel like you belong there. Right. I'm supposed to eat this. I own it. I own this. I bought this from you. This is unprecedented. Because I've just thought of a way to answer an actual question with a Yahoo answer. It's a sort of synthesis we've never done before, but you could put little index cards in the little spirals that say, good for one massage. <laughs> okay. Okay. Huh. Ouroboros, the snake eats its tail. Nope, it's a straightforward snake. It's just a snake. But I mean what you did, just a right there. A snake eats another snake. <laughs> yes. That could be good. Oh, man. It depends on what kind of vending machines. Yes, we had one vending machine at the high school I went to, Huntington High. Go Highlanders, I guess. I was never very enthusiastic about your sports when I was there, so I don't know why I would, like, 16 years removed. But anyway... We had a Fruitopia vending machine way past Fruitopia's <laughs> tragic death. Um, Where so, were they getting it? What? Where were they getting That's it? That's a good question. It was all the same ones it just left over. It may have just over. been the same Fruitopia. If memory serves, it was all sold out except for one flavor, and that flavor must have been fucking bad. <laughs> At my middle school, they had a uh, vending machine that only sold cans of guava juice. <laughs> which sounds bougie, but they all look like they were made in 1970s. Yeah. So. But if you this get one healthy. of those vending machines that have, like, lifesavers up top and Pop-Tarts at the bottom for some yeah, reason. I love that. That's, that's the only two things I need, baby. But that's terrifying when the lifesavers are on top because you know it's dust by the time it gets to the bottom. What? I, that is a f long fall for lifesavers to make and, like, survive. Let me hit you with this. Giant vending machine. Nothing but condoms. What is being messaged there? That's my question to you. Why does it have to be giant? <laughs> how, how many varietals are included here? Because, Travis, a small vending machine full of condoms isn't very funny. <laughs> actually argue that one condom sized vending machine <laughs> with one row of condoms or just one condom in it and it costs five hundred dollars <laughs> i feel like if you have a one condom vending machine that's being judgmental that's like putting it behind a paywall you should just be giving those things away but if you expand the size to a lot then it starts to seem like you're an enthusiast and you just want to offer variety let me throw this out 500 spots, all sold out except one. <laughs> I had a big night last night. I don't want to talk about it. I tried to, I tried to make my house like in Up, but it didn't work. <laughs> I imagine in that movie, the old man is just floating by other people's houses with his condom balloons, just like looking in the windows and like flirting and that, that movie's called You Up? <laughs> Whoa! Woo! It's Damn, it, Griffin. someone on Twitter's gonna steal that joke and get a million followers. Uh, I don't think that would fit in a tweet, mon frere. That's yeah, a long way fair. around to get it's to that long, one. So now walk. imagine there's a hallway lined with vending machines, right? Huh? So giant vending machine full of condoms, price for each item, one massage. But <laughs> <laughs> received, not given. You let me give you a massage, I give you a condom. This is bad. This okay. is actually gone. Don't do this one. This one is not a good one. I've you realized. know what I'm saying? It. I'm hearing it. I'm hearing it. Yeah, absolutely. It's bad. Absolutely. This one's not good. Don't do that one. But you mm, mm. do you watch your guests walk through this hallway judging their choices <laughs> as they walk? Because I imagine a hallway full of vending machines. I'm imagining some like the shining but with product placement sort of action going on. Right. And so they walk past the, you know, the, the Sprite machine. They walk past the one with the uh, Lifesavers and Pop-Tarts. They walk past one that has, like, 
your mixtape in it, and you're like, ooh, you gonna stuff with the mixtape one? I made that, these are some hand-drawn zines? No, uh, I'm gonna keep no. on going. You're not gonna buy my zines. Okay. Uh, uh, can weird. you do a question for me, Justin? Oh, I love that, Griffin. Thank you so much for asking. That's so sweet of you. I'm 24, and I wanna get into eating cheese. It felt like he was gonna interrupt us, which yeah. is why I... No. Okay. It felt like he was going to interrupt himself, but I was really excited to watch it happen. Yeah. So I'm 24, and I want to get into eating cheese so that I don't feel like a social pariah at fancy dinner parties. <laughs> Did you just lean over to fart? No, uh, he was scared you were no, going to interrupt No, I'm afraid or... you're going to like yell at me. So I don't feel like a social pariah at fancy dinner parties. I'm not lactose intolerant. I just don't like how it tastes. Yes. I do love pizza, though, because pizza is the perfect food, second only to sandwiches. That's incorrect, but whatever. I assume that, at least for me, it will be an acquired taste. What would be a good type of cheese to start with? And that's from Cheeseless in the District. Now, brothers, I am going to have to defer to you on this question. I'm assuming the first dozen pieces of raw cheese you put into your mouth were foul and profane. <laughs> no, no. As they would, they turn. Please explain they turn the terminology to, you've just used. I, raw cheese, we've talked about it before. It's, I, well, I don't fuck with raw cheese. I only like melted cheese, like on pizza or burgers. I just don't fuck with raw cheese. <laughs> it's so it's good. Not that, it's not that weird. Raw cheese is milk. I just don't fuck with raw cheese. <laughs> so you guys will have to talk about how, na- don't, don't, don't do this to me right now. Okay? I'm trying to do a comedy show. I don't want to talk about raw cheese and how Cheese turns- has been cooked, kind of. My wife. It's been stirred enough, I think. <laughs> We've been trying to get the kids to broaden their palates, and Sydney said, you know, you set a really bad example because you rule out whole categories of foods that you won't even try. And I said, name one. She said, raw cheese. I said, name two. That was a gimme. And she, <laughs> she said, creamy dips. <laughs> and it's fair. I won't eat creamy dips. And she said, you can't just say you won't eat creamy dips. You're 38 years old. I said, let me turn that around on you. I'm 38 years old. I can say that I don't like creamy dips. I'm just not going to do that. Uh, French onion, uh, the soup's great, the dip's whack. Creamy ranch. Ranch, yes. ranch, foul. That's the one that boggles my mind. Foul. Ranch, the, like, second, like, I would say it goes, like, ketchup and mustard tied. Ranch is like right there of like most go to. Don't fuck with it. Okay. Don't fuck with so ranch. How do you don't start fuck with creamy dips. Don't cut, fuck with raw cheese. So, brothers, how did you start? How right. did you power through your first hundred nasty bites of raw cheese to okay. trick yourself into thinking it was good? I, huh? I'll get to how to enjoy it in a second. If you want to sound continental more <laughs> than any other like food there is, cheese is the easiest thing to bullshit about and sound intelligence. To the point where you can even comment on the consistency of it and sound smart and go, ooh, that's a soft cheese. <laughs> a thing anyone could tell. Oh, and I, uh, are like, oh, yes. Oh, oh, that's kind of a hard cheese. I kind of uh, destroyed that with my teeth into a different state that was easier to swallow. So <laughs> I, have a, I have a few catch-alls that I use for wine that you could probably steal for cheese. Okay. Like, uh, let me give me you one. Oh, assertive. Ooh. <laughs> and then you back it up again, like, take another sip and buy yourself a few more time, a little bit more time. That's assertive fruit. That's yeah. an assertive fruit on there. Oh, is that pepper? Ooh. A little bit of that. That's good. Can I try one? Yeah. Take a bite of the cheese and go, ooh, that's very cheese forward. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like you're doing a sketch. I wouldn't do that. You could also take a bite. Here's the secret. Psst. Unlike wine, actually exactly like wine, nobody has any fucking idea what they're talking about. <laughs> so if you pick up any cheese and bite it and go, oh, that's gone bad, nobody can disprove it. Start, start it with, actually, that's bad. <laughs> oh, don't eat this one, guys. <laughs> this one's bad. Don't eat this one, Mary. Uh, that would go well with crackers is another, like, I, 95% of the time you're cool with that. I like how you guys have glommed onto the easy part of this question, which is faking expertise, which anyone could do at any time, and not focus on the hard part, which is how to eat 
fucking rowdy. Well, what am I supposed to tease? I'm not gonna. Te- I'm not gonna. I'll, I'll tell you how to do it. Yeah, I'm okay. not gonna do close up magic for you up here to show you how to pocket it. I want you to take a bite of the cheese. This is what I do when I go to the dentist. Take a bite of the cheese and then just start. What counting. the fuck's up with your dentist, my butt? No, no, no. Let me get to it. Take a bite of the cheese. Your teeth are fucked up, and we're gonna have to get in there like Rambo and save your mouth. But first. I melted some brie on some apples. <laughs> that wasn't the part I was getting. But that would be nice. I Actually, wouldn't. Now, now that you're saying that, that would be pretty I mean, cool. If they melt it, sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine too. We're all in agreement. That'll Take a good. bite of the cheese and then start counting ceiling tiles. That's yes, what I was work. going to say. Oh, that was it? Yes. Okay. Wow. That's what I do at the dentist. It wasn't a good bit, but I was hoping I'd give you time to think of something funny to say. <laughs> And now we've pulled back the curtain too far. Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 something in the monitor. I yeah, have Paul something Vance in the monitor. The monitor. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to cut it. Not for DC. Let's feed back or pump something. It up. Yeah, pump it up. Here we go. <laughs> I want to munch. Within a podcast, thank you to Jade for that theme song. Uh, this is a podcast of the podcast highlighting the latest and greatest in brand eating <laughs> and quick service restaurant innovation, fun ovation, if you will. I will. I have fucking huge news. <laughs> um, does everybody? Does everybody feel kind of bummed out by how static the level of craveable innovation has been? <laughs> Fear not. Fear if not. Answer, if you listen to this show and the answer to that is yes, you're a madman. <laughs> Taco Bell has taken craveable innovation to the next level. I didn't want it to be them. It was, though. Who else them. would it be, they're, they're delisting the fucking uh, Cooler Ranch Locos Doritos Taco. They can fuck off if they're replacing it with... No, 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 listen. Unless it's two Locos Doritos Cooler Ranch Tacos. The, here's the, the subhead for this. Uh, the company gives fans carefree indulgence in this elevated Chalupa experience. Come, my friends. Now, this is a very accurate subhead. Because if you eat the toasted cheddar chalupa and someone's like, what are you doing? Your proper response is, I don't fucking care. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm literally carefree. I'm not about my body, not about my spirit. I, I've never thought about carefree in those terms before. Of like, I used to care and now I'm, I've given up. Yeah, I'm free of caring. That is also the most hedonistic subhead I've ever heard a company yeah, put it its is. name. This Indulge is in our this pleasure. Is Eat the cheese and the beef we have supplied. Live in the moment. You guys are having a lot of fun with the fucking subhead of this press release. <laughs> The beloved Taco Bell Chalupa, the fans know and love, is getting a next level cheesy glow up. Introducing the toasted cheddar chalupa. Confirmed for nationwide release. September, <laughs> Holy September shit. Hold on. We checked with our scientists. We just checked with ourselves. We are definitely doing this, folks. You, I like that. That sounds like a threat. You can't reason with us. We've confirmed it. Well, this, we're, we're way past the point of no return on this one. Historically, also, they tested in one market, so it's like, well, we killed Buffalo, but um, at te- least we didn't get the rest of the country. The Tesla Cheddar Chalupa presents brilliantly simplistic shell innovation by baking real aged cheddar cheese onto the shell. Since the classic Chalupa was first introduced in 1999, Taco Bell has consistently found new ways to create all new Chalupa experiences. Thank God. (laughs) Whether it's flavor innovation, like the Baja Chalupa in 2000, size innovation with the 2017 launch of the Double Chalupa. Is that an innovation, Taco Bell? (laughs) That is just... That is just addition. (laughs) Or protein innovation with the Naked Chicken Chalupa. That is... That is not a... (laughs) 
It's a munchbot favorite. A protein favorite. innovation. It's a, it's, a ra- it's a fucking whack chicken breast that they fold it into a taco. No, Shut I up. get that, but that's not like we've invented a new protein. That, yeah, we found that, some new protein fossilized in amber. Naked chicken chalupa that same year. The chalupa experience has no boundaries, and that is a threat. <laughs> That is a threat. We are not stopping here, folks. We are nowhere near the fucking Rubicon. At Taco Bell, here's a quote from Liz Matthews, Chief Food Innovation Officer at Taco Bell Corp. At Taco Bell, we get excited by the what ifs. We can, <laughs> it gets us rock hard. It gets us rock hard to excited about the what ifs we can dream up and bring to life for our fans. And the, it, it is a, a living sentient <laughs> being. <laughs> and the toasted cheddar chalupa is an example of just that. We know cheese makes everything better, and ba- uh, within limits, and baking aged cheddar into the shell of an already iconic product is a game changer for our fans. Huh. Our fans will love. I don't know what the game is, but yeah. I feel we've all lost already. To be fair, baking cheese onto most games is a game changer. Sure. That's a lot harder to play chess, huh? Hey, I think, you're, I think your copy of Operation is fucked. <laughs> If there's one, th- this thing's 10 paragraphs long. Oh, we God. gotta haul ass. If there's one sure sign of the latest foodie craze, it's a line stretching around the block. That's why Taco. That has nothing to do with fucking anything, Taco Bell. Yeah, it, it would mean something if people were lining up. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> okay, listen, though. If there's one sure sign of the latest foodie craze, it's a line stretching around the block. That's why Taco Bell is giving a few fans the, tra- uh, the chance to try Taco Bell's latest craveable innovation before it's even available nationwide. But because the foodiest hotspots are all the best kept secrets, fans will have to uncover where the advanced tastings of oh toasted God. cheddar are being served for themselves. Are they doing? They're gonna have to hire Nicolas Cage. <laughs> The, the most wild thing about this, this, this paragraph, and I'm sure there's more wild things about the other paragraphs, but this paragraph specifically, is that, that they are basically saying, like, wouldn't it be weird if we were, like, real food? <laughs> <laughs> it's basically, like, food face. Like, they're pretending to be food. It's, it's a perversion of what we, we understand food to be. Like, what if Taco Bell was, like, food that you'd buy at a restaurant? Wouldn't that be wild? Also, anyway. the weird kayfabe of re- putting out a press release and saying, but we're not going to tell you, as though they haven't published like a they like, didn't dissertation. Publish, they haven't published locations, though. That's what's Is secret. this the start of a fucking Taco Bell ARG Justin McElroy? Not, not, uh, is this, do you mean an alternate reality gordita? No, <laughs> it is not. Is, is it I love cheese? And see, there was an ARG called I Love Bees that promoted a halo. Okay, six of you like that. Um, the toasted cheddar chalupa is not just one of this year's biggest innovations from Taco Bell. It's also the largest international release of a menu item for Taco Bell since the Naked Chicken Chalupa in 2017. Starting this month and for a limited time, the menu item will also be available in Aruba, Canada, Chile, Costa Rica, Dominican Republic, El Salvador, Guatemala, Panama, and Puerto Rico. Uh, after all, the love of cheese is definitely universal. Like the classic chalupa, the toasted cheddar chalupa is filled with the option of seasoned beef, chicken, or steak, and then piled with shredded lettuce. These are just the ingredients. What takes the chalupa to foodie-worthy status is all on the outside of the shell. It's the fucking cheese you melted. Like, yeah. Why do these press releases have to tell you six times and then we melted the cheese? We put cheese on it and made it real hot. Taco Bell has taken six-month aged sharp cheddar cheese. Old cheese. <laughs> there were six... I'm glad cheese ain't sentient. Because there that means there'll be six months where the cheese is like, they must be saving me up for something good. <laughs> what is it? What is it? William H. Macy's birthday? <laughs> I'm headed for big things, suckers. <laughs> Adios, I'm going to be oh what? <laughs> outside of a chalupa. What's up? What's up? It's nice to be here. So you're uh, your new dirty ground beef. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, they, they t- uh, toasted it on the iconic chalupa shell to create a crispy blanket of flavor and texture, unlocking a whole new cheese experience. <laughs> that's, that's this uh, week's Munch Squad. Thank you for indulging me. Thank you, Munch Squad. Thank you. 
Oh, hello there. This is Griffin uh, McElroy, the littlest one of the three of them. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening to this live episode from, gosh, last September that we did in Washington, D.C. I tried to give you all a heads up, but uh, Travis and Teresa have just welcomed a new human being into the planet Earth. And so uh, things are going to be a little bit up in the air for uh, for a while. Uh, So, yeah, get a live one this week. Next week, uh, maybe another live one, maybe a bros better, bros best. I don't know. I don't know. We're figuring it out as we go, building the plane under our butts as we fly it. Uh, but thank you all so much for sticking with us, and uh, of course, congratulations to uh, Travis and Teresa. We're all super, super happy for them, uh, and we're also super happy that Stamps.com has decided to sponsor us this episode. Equally happy, I would say, uh, because New Year's resolutions, they are difficult to keep. I'm always saying that, uh, but here's an easy one that you can do, a resolution, I mean. You can stop wasting time going to the post office and use Stamps.com instead. It's super slick, super easy, streamlined, efficiency business. It brings all the services of the U.S. Postal Service right to your computer. You just use your computer to print official U.S. postage 24-7, and then once your mail is ready, you just hand it to your mail carrier or you drop it in your freaking mailbox. Don't worry about it. Also, with Stamps.com, you get five cents off every first-class stamp and up to 40% off priority mail. So give yourself a resolution you can actually keep this year. Stop going to the post office. Go to Stamps.com instead. There's no risk. And with our promo code, my brother, you get a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in my brother at stamps.com, promo code my brother, all one word. That's stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. Hey, MeUndies. MeUndies is also here, uh, and they're here for you, and they're also here for your dog or your cat or whatever. Because, hey, they have these new pants things that are called buddy pants, and uh, they allow you to match whatever you're wearing to whatever your pet is wearing. They've got not one, not two, not nine, but three new Valentine's Day prints uh, that you can match with your with your buddy this year. If you're matching with your BFF, a loved one, whatever, or your dog, it still counts with me undies. They also have new loungewear you can wear out and about. Keep your eyes peeled for some cozy new additions. They got a great offer for our listeners. For any first-time purchasers, you get 15% off and free shipping, plus a 100% satisfaction guarantee. So to get 15% off your first pair, of free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash MyBrother. That's MeUndies.com slash MyBrother. Uh, hey, we have a live show coming up in Cincinnati. You can go to McRoy.family, see if there's still tickets available for that one. We're doing Taz and Mabim Bam. And uh, we're figuring out what we're going to be doing for touring for the rest of the year. Uh, got the Joko Cruise coming up in March, but we're looking into the future for the Fill Your Life with Laughter and Love Tour 2020. Looking forward for the, to, to that. Uh, I believe pre-orders are still open for the Taz board game. You can go to theadventurezonegame.com. We've been working on some new content for that that uh, we're all really excited about. And uh, Graphic Novel 3 of the Adventure Zone graphic novel series is also available to pre-order. That one's coming out this summer. You can go to theadventurezonecomic.com and, and check that all out. Uh, I think that that's probably going to do it. Uh, again, we'll be back next Monday, probably with another sort of uh, special episode to fill the gap while uh, Travis and Teresa are away enjoying the new human being that they've created. Uh, so yeah, we'll be back next week with something, and uh, we'll talk to you then. Bye. Hey, gang. Jesse here, the founder of Maximum Fun, and with me is Stacy Molsky, who is, among other things, the lady who responds to all of your tweets. Hi, everyone. I also send you newsletters. Uh, so anyway, something really awesome. You, Max Fun listeners, have given us the chance to do something really cool on behalf of our entire community, and we wanted to tell you about it. Last summer, following the Max Fun Drive, we put all of the enamel pins on sale to $10 and up members, with proceeds going to the National CASA GAL Association for Children. Your generous support and enthusiasm raised over $100,000. Our bookkeeper, Steph, would be quick to tell me the exact total is $109,025, to be exact. Your money will go toward pairing kids who've experienced abuse or neglect with court-appointed advocates or guardian ad litem volunteers. In other words, kids in tough spots will have somebody in their corner. Knowledgeable grown-ups who are on their team through court dates and life upheavals and confusing situations, whatever. The money we raise together is going to help a lot of kids. Whether you bought pins or not, you can help us build on that $109,000 foundation. Make a donation to support National Casa GAL and help some of our nation's most vulnerable children. 
at MaximumFun.org slash C-A-S-A. That's MaximumFun.org slash CASA. And seriously, thank you. Our community rules. There was a question, there's a question that was sent to us that we're not going to get to. A lot of people send us jokey jokes, and that's fine and everything, but it doesn't give us a long runway to go off of. But somebody sent one laugh, in that was really, really funny. Uh, uh, so we're not going to do this question, but I wanted to read it out loud because it cracked us the fuck up. Uh, Jesse in section N, row J, seat one, asked, <laughs> crushed it. <laughs> Asked, I keep accidentally tricking people into thinking I know shit about astrology by saying yikes to their sign. <laughs> that is a solid ass bit. It's a good bit. It's a quality I'm a, bit. Jesse, oh, I'm a Gemini. Yikes. People are going to steal that. It's going to be all over DC soon. Yikes. So good. All right. Yikes. Oh, uh, you're, ooh, Taurus. Yikes. Okay, let's uh, uh, let's let's begin. Hello, uh, everybody seems to have congregated on the stage. Right microphone. That's totally fine. Let's begin. Hi, what's your name? Uh, Hello. Hi, Autumn. Autumn. Hi. Hi. How's it hi, going? Hi. Yeah. <laughs> now this is your part. Okay. Okay. Um, we don't have a question for right, you. Right. Uh, my question was, uh, what should I do with all these teeth? Yeah. 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 So we had some follow-ups. I lied. We do have questions for you. Uh, Where did you okay. get them? With, with, I'm sorry, with teeth? Okay. Um, so Wait, I was... can I get a bit more autumn in my monitor, please? Because it sounded like autumn said teeth. <laughs> okay. Um, so I was sitting in my sister's car the other day. Okay. And... Not how I expected oh, this to start. <laughs> please, I'm on pins and needles I here. opened the glove box and okay. holy okay. shit... <laughs> Um, so she had this, uh, this like purple chest in her cup holder, and so I, I looked inside it, and it had three human teeth in it. And okay. <laughs> That's way more than I expected okay. you to okay. say. So, <laughs> um, so I, I turn to my sister, who's driving the car, mm -hmm. and I say, why do you have a bunch of teeth? Fair. Yes. Like, yes. Uh -huh. um, she said they belong to her children. She doesn't want to tell her children that the tooth fairy gave them back to her. So she Wait, hold up. That's what she would say? <laughs> She's that... the worst liar fucking ever. Well, the tooth fairy said your teeth are busted and well, super brittle. And she's also keeping them in a cup holder? Okay. Does so... she not know that garbage cans exist? <laughs> well, that's it. She said she didn't feel right throwing part of her kid's body out. Okay. No. No, that's no. decent. That's good. That's fair. So, how does this story she... end with you receiving the teeth, Autumn? <laughs> well, what did you okay. say? Well, here's here's what I said. Um, we were actually listening to uh, a Mabim Bam bit on Don't YouTube. Don't put this on fucking <laughs> us. <laughs> You dare? We're you the one who said we're good people. We're good people. You're the one who said yum yum. Give me some of them teeth. <laughs> Autumn. Autumn. Um, so then, uh, so I said that I was coming to see you live and that you take advice questions from the audience. You didn't oh, fucking bring said, the teeth. She said I should ask you what to do with the teeth. But you, you didn't, didn't bring, bring them, the teeth. Right? Well, I didn't. I don't have them with. Thank them. you. Oh, yes. no. that's correct. I was about to edit in the sound of like a maraca just to freak everybody's fucking bean at home. Hey, Autumn, throw them away. Put them in the garbage can. She doesn't want to do that. Why I, not? Well, because they're part of her kid's body. No, they're so not. Is the pee poo okay. to the, the fucking fingernails. So is hair you cut off. <laughs> you don't keep all the hair, do you, Hold Autumn? On. Now, wait a minute. Oh. Hold on. Autumn, we're coming at you pretty aggro right now. I want to take a step back. I will acknowledge, I will cede this to you. That teeth are a more precious part of my body than hair, my fingernails, my poopy. My hair is the most special part of my body. Go on. If I lose a tooth now, I will have the thought of, well, should I do something with this? I won't do that with anything else. So there is something to this fair. question. You it's wouldn't fair. do that with any other part of your body. <laughs> I mean, if you lost another part of your body, okay. you would feel more cool chucking it than a tooth. On the scale of... Lo anyway, Travis, you know what I'm saying. Uh, th th throw, them throw them away. <laughs> I, I mean, okay. 
I don't think she's going to want them back. Well, right? So I did find a place in Baltimore that buys human teeth. Oh, my God. Now, no, you cannot. Them. Don't do it. Yes, do it. No, because in three years, you'll see some people who look a lot like your nieces and nephews running around. So, okay, what does the place in Baltimore do with them? Uh, it makes them into jewelry. Yes, yes, makes yes, them into yes, jewelry. Oh, actually, no, that rules. Do that. Hey, wait. Get that for your sister. Hey, wait. So there is an actual tooth fairy, but it's a, <laughs> it's a company in Baltimore. Is that what you're saying to me? So, Autumn, if I may, what you have done, and listen, I appreciate this because it gave us something to talk about, but you said, what should I do with these teeth that I already figured out something to do with? Well, I, I actually only called that place after I submitted the question. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, fair uh, enough. But, hey, cool. Don't fucking sell your nieces and nephew's teeth to a fucking strange company in Baltimore. Throw them in the no, garbage. No, but pay, you could pay to have them made into jewelry for your sister. Oh, thanks for this great necklace, Autumn. I love it. This is great. It is a step up from a plastic cup and a cup holder. This is perfect Incorrect. for me, a Klingon blood warrior. Does that help Autumn? Yeah. yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, Autumn. Um, Big hand, big hand. How about... Uh, what do you have for sale on nasty eBay, which this show has apparently become? Uh, Caitlin Row F Seat One, head on down for uh, the ad, join the queue. Hello. Hi. Um, okay, I'm kind of freaking out right now. You're you fine. got this. <laughs> You've got, got this. this. What's your name? Um, I'm Tara. Hello, Hi. Tara. Um, so I am selling my weird cursed Photoshop things on eBay, apparently. Okay. So, um, I'm Is this a surprise to you? No. <laughs> No, um, so my grandmother keeps asking me about this new digital art class that I'm taking in school. Right, it's a considerate <laughs> thing for your grandma but, to do. Um, what we do in digital art is our teacher lets us do whatever we want in Photoshop. Okay. And that's we a are bad a bunch teacher, y'all. Yeah. That's <laughs> he like gives Are us you paying <laughs> to go to this school? You could do that at home. <laughs> he like gives us general guidelines. But for example, you had to combine a bunch of images in a landscape, and I made a giant crab with laser eyes attacking Ocean City. Okay. Wait, sick. <laughs> sick. <laughs> yeah. But um, I'm not sure how I tell my grandmother. This is a thing that I submitted in class and that I get graded on. <laughs> okay. You don't want your grandmother to see your crab monster <laughs> art. What if it turns out I have to your say, grandmother loves it? That, that's definitely the pure and true and good and nice answer to this question. I must say, when I did read your question in our <laughs> inbox, I did think, uh, how do I explain to my grandmother that my digital art projects are not something she wants to see would be a little bit more, how do I say? Um, yeah, I was talking with my friend after I submitted it, like, oh, they're going to think about it that way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. wrote it, right? You wrote the question yeah. with your, like, your physical body. You yeah. know, have you ever done any nasty digital art? Come I'm on. dying yeah. up here. Give us something. I'm going to hit you with something, Tara. Um, well, instead of crab, but like sexy. <laughs> a sexual, sexual crab. crab. You know, I mean, is merging the faces of Hillary Clinton and Markiplier sexy? Because I did. I don't. <laughs> I don't I'm not Tara, here to yuck any yums. Tara, I'm going to hit you with something. Not literally. We get mad. We get so mad at old people for not knowing about everything. But maybe it's because we get to a point where we stop showing them all the cool shit. <laughs> maybe if we weren't so afraid to expose our old people to cool shit, I wouldn't have to explain everything to my dad. <laughs> maybe he would just know about dope shit, and I wouldn't have to try to sit him down and do a PowerPoint about yeah. how Steven Universe works. Like, maybe I just... <laughs> fucking let him watch it. We had a powerful moment last tour. We were in Atlanta. I remember we were backstage and I broke down in tears because of the moment I was having with Dad where I did all my Fortnite dances in front of him. <laughs> Maybe there is a beautiful possibility here, Tara, that you show your grandmother this crab attacking a thing and your grandmother goes mm, and steps over to a closet and pulls out and she is cut out of magazines. The same thing from 1942. <laughs> And has made the exact same picture 
and then you finally connect with her on a very deep personal yeah. level. Or it'll, or it'll be like Charlie Chaplin holding a beach ball, and she'll be like, fucking get it? <laughs> Did Sarah, you see this meme I made? Yeah, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> You got him. <laughs> I'm going to take a while. Uh, Tara, how, how well do you know your grandma and your grandma know you? Um, well, we live with each other, so I know her. Okay, habits. okay. That's pretty good. Sarah, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit you with something. Uh, again, this is number two. Um, your grandma knows you're not painting sunflowers, Tara. She knows you. She knows you're, you're getting weird. Just let her see your weird art. It'll be less weird than she thinks, as evidenced by us reading your yes, question. It's, yes, you're, it's so much oh. worse for her not knowing. Oh, Nana. <laughs> Nana. It's a giant crab. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God it's a giant crab. <laughs> Tell me everything. I, at least I have some point of reference for that. Yeah. Does that help? Yes, thank good, you. Good, Excellent. Thank you. Uh, hello. 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 What's up? Hi, I'm Kyle. Hi, Kyle. Kyle. Uh, so I was uh, at my office. Uh, I worked at a music school, a uh, lovely place with a lot of classical music everywhere. Very, Very professional, professional setting. Yeah, yeah. And one day I my... I your code. I know exactly where you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Um, one day my boss came in and she said, uh, are you guys familiar with Beyblades at all? Um... <laughs> That's a bold way to lead into that. Go yeah, on. Yeah, well, I, I, I said, um, would you like to see some? Uh, <laughs> you didn't I, for a second think this is a trap? Yeah, that's a trap. <laughs> uh, I, I thought maybe a raise was involved. Um, but I had How some Beyblades. How you know about Beyblades? Here's $5,000. <laughs> <laughs> You never know, it's the arts. Um, but we went, I, uh, I had a couple Beyblades and an arena in my trunk. Um, <laughs> and, uh, in case of what? Yeah. <laughs> Cha- a challenger. <laughs> in case you're being mugged by some toughs and you'd be like, let's settle this on the Beyblade arena. <laughs> Beyblades, let's rip. Ah, oh, you, you did stab me. Oh, why did, I, I, why did oh. I unlock my car trunk for you? I've made this so much easier. <laughs> I, I'm just going to go ahead and get in here. <laughs> all, you've, all you've got is a knife? Well, <laughs> I've got okay. a blade. Oh, you, God, I'm bleeding. Oh, no, no, no. So what happened next? Yeah, so I brought him into the office, uh, and, I, and I left him there for a while. Ooh. And then uh, one day I came back in, and I realized that the arena was still there, but the Beyblades were not. And uh, Don't. <laughs> I, I mean, it's my fault. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm just desperate to try and figure out how to crack the case of my very... You want can us I, from this stage to tell you who you in your office stole your Beyblade? Did you submit a list of suspects? <laughs> something? Do you have Did any you clues? Take any kind of detail that counts with their comings and goings? I'm ready to use my little gray cells to solve this problem yeah. for you, but I need something to go on. Can I ask you a Maybe. very sincere question that yeah, I want go you ahead. to answer? Sure. When you brought them in, yeah. and they were in your office. Yes. And you decided to leave them in your office. It's true. Why? I... In case of what? He, he, can I try? Were you yeah. lazy and just didn't fucking feel like carrying it back to the car? Yeah. Okay, okay. yeah. <laughs> Ask an answer. I recognize my kind. Air fist bump. Have you noticed other people in your office seeming especially, I don't know, relaxed? Enjoying their life for the first time in forever. Travis thinks that this is the therapeutic effect of Beyblades. <laughs> Honest to God, I know nothing what about them. Fucking fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the closest comparison I have is fidget spinners, which I find to be very relaxed. <laughs> you got to put more better Beyblades in there and set up a camera. We we set a trap. Um, Wait, what? You already yeah. tried a trap. So lead with that. Lead with the Beyblade trap. Yes, it got complicated. Um, my, no, uh, <laughs> yes, that's what I want to hear. There wasn't going to be an easy solution no, to this. No, certainly no. Uh, my my Rubik's cube went missing, uh, and uh, a couple other things around the office, okay, and so we left okay. a candy bar on a desk precariously placed. I didn't know what we thought would happen next, um, <laughs> but surprise, surprise, it too uh, was gone later. You were just uh, trying to prove to yourself that things were in fact being stolen? <laughs> and not, and what, becoming sentient and walking away? Like Toy Story style? 
You never know. Okay. No, hey, you do. <laughs> you, know. you, do. you do know. On this one, you do know. So you, That was it? That was the end of your was investigation? Your, that was your whole trap? Kyle, well, that's now not I'm a here. Trap. That is an offering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I had figured it out, I wouldn't have asked. That's so. a shitty trap. That's like a hunter going out into the woods and like laying a carrot down and then leaving. <laughs> do it again, set up a camera. And that'll, that'll be that. Oh, or okay. just go to the middle of the office, set your arena down, yell something about Beyblade I've never consumed. Sorry, this is the one I don't know about, folks. So something, you know it's niche. And then you just fucking rip it into that good bowl. And if nobody comes around, then you won't know who the thief is, but you will know that they're chicken shit. <laughs> Does that help? Yep. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Feel free. Hello. Hello. Hey, brothers. Hi, Hi. what's up? Uh, not much. Just enjoying a great show. Oh, oh thank, thank you. you. Yeah. So sweet. <laughs> not enough people say that, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> I like Kyle's double take. <laughs> <laughs> double take. Uh, what, what, uh, what, what was your name first off? Kate. Hi, Kate. How, what's your question? Um, I'm here with my brother who came to see the show just because I asked him to, which is very sweet. Nice. And we were hanging out before the show, and we decided to start watching John Wick, which I've never seen. Yes. Okay. Um, we're not so great at timing things, so we only got to about the halfway point of John Wick. Okay. Um, and I was hoping that y'all could help me feel like I've accomplished both things tonight, going to a show and watching John Wick. If you could explain the rest of the plot of John yeah. Wick. <laughs> okay, wait, hold on. What was the last thing you saw? No spoilers. By the way, this will be a spoiler-free summation of what was, a plot of John Wick. What was the last thing you saw before you, like, I assume, hit stop as you walked and if out you the say, door? And if you say uh, he shot a Russian, I will have you removed from the no, no, theater. No. We need some kind of specifics. Um, there was some cryptic exchanges happening Fuck. in a hotel. That's oh, yeah, are you yeah. kidding me? That, that actually narrows it down 20%. To so one of the three <laughs> movies in the John Wick franchise. Okay. Okay. So John Wick is a pet enthusiast. Yes. <laughs> Who loves his car. He, not so much that the car carries through to any future movies. He's not a gun enthusiast, but he's, but guns are enthusiastic about him. Yeah. And, <laughs> So, there's the, you saw what happened to the dog. We don't have to get into that. That's no, some, some bad stuff happens to a dog, and that's unfortunate. Yes. That's no good. But that dog was the fuel for the engine that was John Wick's angry, angry carnage. Yes. <laughs> and there, okay, we said no spoiler. May I, just for a yeah, moment? Yeah, yeah, There is a moment at the end. You skip to the end. Well, well, yeah, I know, but it, it ties back in where... George Carlin shows up. Yeah. In a phone booth. And they travel back in time and save the dog. Yeah, so it's good. Oh, excellent. Hey. And then that dog ushers in like an eternity of happiness. Hey, hey. He shoots everybody and gets a new dog. <laughs> yeah, but. Hold on. There's no, I mean, he shoots everybody. And then he gets a new dog. He goes to the dog <laughs> store, nice. and the person's like, hey, you want a new dog? They're $100. And he's like, bang. Uh, <laughs> all these That's dogs a, are mine now. It's so. a really casual pet store. He also drives a car real cool. He drives a car real cool. Uh, he shoots like a billion guys. He, he like kills the shit out of three young Greyjoy. You're just was wasting time. He kills everybody. And then he gets a new dog. That's, feel free to begin John Wick 2, because now you're caught up. He's not gonna be riding on the back of a dragon on John Wick 2, and you're like, what the fuck did Wait, they not tell me? Where did the dragon fair, though, In John Wick 2 and 3, a dog dies at the beginning, and it gets a new, better dog at the end. Everyone, and it just keeps, everyone. It just keeps escalating to a better and better dog. Right. Hey, does that help? In the last movie, he teams up with Dog the Bounty Hunter, and it's... <laughs> does that help?
help. Is that good? That's all extremely helpful. Thank good. you. Yeah. So Thank glad you. we could help. You can bring the house lights down now. Thank you so much. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. That's a beautiful painting. Yes, thank I see you. right there. And the darkness is here. Ah. Ah. Now it's just me and my brothers. Ah. So, uh, yeah, thank you all so much. These last two nights have been wild. Y'all are wild. Y'all are yeah. so good. So thank wild. you all so much for coming here. Uh, hey. It is wild. It is wild that we were invited to play here at Constitution Hall, where you know actual people have performed uh, major yeah. big shows. Thank so. you, everybody. This has been so cool here. Thank you so much. Yes, for thank the, you um, for having us. Uh, so, like, uh, uh, we had to leave very early in the morning to head to Pittsburgh. Uh, so we're n- I okay. All right. Oh, that's uh, weird. And like our families are with us and everything, Secret so we're beef. not we're not going to be able to hang out after the show and I'm do a meeting. Travis's anything. family's with him. I'm just tired. <laughs> um, but I have to soak my arms in ice. Yes. So yeah, we're not going to hang out after the show, but we hope that our time with you now has felt like a close communion with uh, the good Lord, Lord, <laughs> the good Lord above, and uh, thank you to Paul for all he does for us. Thank you to If you haven't already, check out Paul check out Paul and Storm dot dot com. gov dot biz. Anyone will get you there. Dot net dot xxx. <laughs> yeah, don't go to that one. <sighs> Wait, who do you think bought up the Paul and Storm dot xxx? Somebody in the audience Me right fucking su- Okay, finish the finish it. Uh, thank you to Schmanners. I see you, Paul. It's a race. <laughs> thank you to Schmanners, our, our terrific opener. Thank you to our dad. Thanks to Amanda and uh, just just everyone who made these shows possible. It's been a it's been a real hoot, and I don't say that lightly. <laughs> and That's only the third time I've heard Griffin say the word hoot. Thanks to John Roderick and the Long Winters for these for a theme song. It's a departure off the album. Put the days to bed. Thank you, Maximum Fun, our podcast home. Yes, thank you, Maximum Fun. You. And uh, I have the final Yahoo here. I'm going to read it now. The Wi-Fi isn't working. Check pollenstorm.xxs later and see if I pulled it off. Uh, this one was sent in by Seth Carlson. Thank you, Seth Carlson. It's by an anonymous Yahoo Answers user who, again, is... Pop- oh, a twofer. Asks... How the bleep? I'm gonna add the cuss words in. How the fuck did Atlantis get lost? It's a fucking continent, not a dime. <laughs> my name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. My brother, my brother, me, kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.